Many years ago, the Archon War took place, slaying many gods in the process. Up to a point nearly 2,000 years ago, the final seat to decide the Seven was finally decided. In doing so though, the surviving gods of the war fled to a realm known as the Dark Sea, because they opposed the idea of living under the Seven's dominion. With that said, the gods who fled there died for unknown reasons we have no idea about. Today though, I think I may have stumbled upon some information involving the Dark Sea's mysteries, and what may have happened, resulting in what it is known for in the present days. With that said, let's open the Tevachinary and see what's been uncovered. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications if you enjoy Tevat's facts and wisdom. Also be sure to join our community discord where we discuss Genshin's mystery and lore with all kinds of other people. You can catch me on Twitch too where I stream Genshin. Links for these will be below. Alright, with that said, let's open the Tevachinary and dive right into this. First and foremost, an explanation of the Dark Sea for those who don't know. The Dark Sea is a term that refers to any location beyond the continent of Tevat. Because they are not within Tevat's boundaries, those who dwell there do not live under the Dominion of the Seven. Thank you Genshin Wiki for that simple and short explanation. Now, the Dark Sea a long time ago used to be inhabited by the Sealy, who built their palaces there. According to legend, Sealy are the remains of an extinct race that once possessed beautiful forms, immense wisdom, and used that to guide human life. Nowadays though, the entire area is now a barren wasteland with grotesque ghostly remains of fallen gods. In The Drunkard's Tale, Volume 3, it depicts a wolf who has stumbled across this wasteland on the verge of death, and had been wandering around for quite some time. At one point, he had been the king of his pack. He was a true leader. He led his pack as they ran across plains, went through old abandoned ruins, and passed through the domains of monsters in the Sealy. In the end, he was unfortunately the last member of his pack, and he kept journeying through this unknown place on his own. Eventually, he came across an abandoned grey palace, and heard the sound of some music being played. Eventually, he came across an abandoned grey palace, and heard the sound of some music being played. The music that was being played came from a maiden with ashen white skin with her head bowed down strumming at her instrument. The wolf intrigued listened to the maiden as she sang. The chirping of insects on long gone autumn night is the chorus of exiles, singing mankind's most ancient song as they live out their plight. Stripped of all that body once held close and the soul once held dear. Song and memories are all that now remain of yesteryear. The last singers, the first Sealy, they played their final tune in the Halls of Angels. The Maiden and Wolf then have a conversation as to what the song means. A song of the Sealy, replied the young Maiden in a soft voice. Long, long ago, we wrote this song for the human savages, yet now we sing it to mourn our own fate. Now, as to who this wolf is, it is a possibility it could be Andreas, but we don't know 100% for sure, though in the rest of the drunkard's tale, it seems to refer to him. From what we can gather though from that young maiden's song is that an unfortunate fate was met with the Sealy race. For whatever unknown reason, the vast majority of the race is now gone. The remnants however remain as we see a bunch of Sealy scattered across Tevat, and now they guide us to their home statues and give us treasure. What happened to the Sealy race and how did they die out? Well, I think the answer lies in the lyrics we just heard. The chirping of insects on a long gone autumn night is the chorus of exiles singing mankind's most ancient song as they live out their plight. There is one word from there that really screams out to me being exile. We know that from the Archon War, there were gods who left Tevat and came to the Dark Sea as they opposed the Rule of the Seven. If you oppose the rule, then you're pretty much considered exiled. With that said, these gods that were also exiled became evil gods, and these gods have also died from reasons unknown. In the last part of the Sealy song from the Drunkard Tale, it sings, the last singers, the first Sealy, played their final tune in the Halls of Angels. Halls of Angels, to me, screams Celestia, meaning there is a possibility that the Sealy race could be connected with that. With the gods opposing Celestia, maybe Celestia ordered the Sealy race to slaughter the gods who would question their rule and it turned into a war. 
the gods could have wanted a place where they could rule and have their own power, seeing the Dark Sea as a very plausible area for them to do that. Filled with the animosity of the previous Archon War, they slaughtered an entire race just to rule. What's really interesting is the origins a lot of these gods have to being named after demons from the Luster King of Solomon in the Ars Goetia. In the Ars Goetia, there consists of 72 demons, and in Genshin, the gods we have seen or heard about so far share the same names of most of these demons. Now, you could argue, yeah, that three archons we know about so far also have the name of demons, but that's beside the point. They abided by what Celestia wanted, and therefore were granted the archon powers they have, thus ruling the lands they inhabit. What I am suggesting, though, is that the Archon War could be a reference to the War in Heaven. In the War of Heaven, it tells of the struggle between Lucifer and God, and how Lucifer disagrees with the creation of human life, and how they would have the ultimate freedom of their own life choices. Not only did Lucifer dislike this approach, but so did Samael, who was God's heavenly judge and chief of the Divine Council. He could see that the human race would become very corrupt and frail in the future. Once the war was over, and a long battle was fought, Lucifer and his army were banished from heaven, and thus created their own domain known as the Underworld, or Hell. They would not make their place of banishment a prison, but a kingdom of which to rule, and one that God's light cannot claim sovereignty over. The Dark Sea could be a reference to Hell, as it also cannot be seen from the eyes of Celestia. Celestia is also described as having heavenly principles. From this information we have gathered, I'm starting to also think that Seelies were the angels of Celestia. The last part of the lyrics we hear from the Seelie song mention the Hall of Angels. The Seelie did guide mankind some time ago, and the remnants of them still do today, like how angels are also depicted doing. However, I believe though, there are members of the Seelie race that survived the slaughter of these corrupt gods. That group of people is known as the Sanganomiya clan. The last of the Sanganomiya people currently live on the island of Watasumi, in the island nation of Inazuma. They are referred to as Mer people who resided in the Dark Sea. However, their kingdom of Enkonomiya was corrupted by darkness, and they were all nearly killed to the Dragon Heir of the Depths. The Dragon Heir of the Depths sounds like an evil god that fled to the Dark Sea, therefore his evil took over the kingdom. Another defeated god, Orobashi, was attempting to flee the Dark Sea after having nothing left. Then Orobashi found a group of abandoned people, or the Sanganomiya people, and took pity on them. Orobashi defeated the Dragon Heir of the Depths, and led the people to the surface which later became Watasumi Island. Orobashi then taught these people how to farm and the smelt, and thus they worshipped him because of it. There was a time where Orobashi even agreed to living in peace with the Raiden Shogun and her people, until one day he invaded and was then killed off by Raiden A. Now, putting Orobashi to the side for now, let's hop back to the Sanganomiya people. From what we know, these people were originally living within the Dark Sea. Okay, Tave, how do we compare these people with the Seelie race? Well, there's one answer. Sanganomiya Kokomi. Kokomi is a descendant of this group of people that presided in the Dark Sea at one point in an underwater kingdom known as Enkonomiya. Now, Enkonomiya, or even the Sanganomiya Shrine, may be inspired by the Ryugu Jo, the undersea palace of Ryujin in Japanese folklore. This place is also known as the Dragon Palace Castle. This palace was beautiful, consisting of gold, crystal, coral, and pearl. A garden also surrounds the palace. There are four sides corresponding to a season. Sakura in bloom to the east, spring, buzzing cicadas to the south, summer, multicolored leaves, west, or autumn, and snow-covered ground to the north, winter. Thank you, Wikipedia. Now, with that said, the Seelie people were also known for creating their beautiful palaces. If this ancient kingdom was a Seelie palace, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Back to Kokomi. Kokomi, like I mentioned, is likely a descendant of the Sanganomiya people. Therefore, that perhaps makes her one of the long-lost Seelie race. From what we know about the Seelie, they had beautiful forms, immense wisdom, and used that to guide mankind. Kokomi is beautiful, has immense wisdom, and guides humans as her role in the Resistance. In an article titled Victory Through Wisdom on the Hoyo Labs website, it describes Kokomi as being a brilliant tactician, outwitting many of her opponents. As a child, 
Kakomi read many military treatises and has always had a talent for outsmarting her enemies. If we also take a look at her appearance and compare her to what we heard about the Sealy in The Drunkard's Tale, they both are pale white. But I'm not sure if that appearance will mean anything. It was just an added touch I felt like adding in. Lastly, there's one thing I want to cover, being why Orobashi attacked out of nowhere when there was clearly peace. All of these gods that went to the Dark Sea were considered as evil gods, but it didn't really seem like Orobashi was an evil god. Going to the Dark Sea did something to corrupt him though. What's really interesting is the lore within the Aerosiderite weapon ascension materials. In the bit of Aerosiderite, it states, the coastal nations of Teyvat refer to the region beyond the protection of the Seven as the Dark Sea. It is said many defeated gods refused to live under the new order of the Seven, so they fled to remote islands and became evil gods. However, their powers came from the same source as Rex Lapis, separate from all this all-devouring darkness. The Peace of Erosiderite says something similar. Rumors of sea monsters are commonplace in Liyue, since the other shore is an unknown region that lies outside of Teyvat. Without the protection of the Seven, all that lies beyond is unknown chaos. Only power beyond the Order of Teyvat is able to stain the power of Rex Lapis black. Now, how this correlates to Orobashi is within the Weapon Ascension material set, The Branches of a Distant Sea. All of them describe Orobashi helping the abandoned group of people, but there's one in particular that really stuck out to me, being the Jeweled Branch of a Distant Sea. In its description, it states, This coral cannot be found anywhere in Teyvat, but was a gift that the Great Serpent obtained when it broke into the Dark Sea. For that abyssal snake to be filled with coral had to be mighty, and its powers would be shaved away as those corals were lost. In other words, these corals contain power beyond the norm. What this implies is that the Dark Sea contains power beyond the norm, and as Orobashi used those corals from the Dark Sea to help the Sanganomiya people, his power was shaved as those corals were lost. What he didn't know though was that these corals could corrupt you to darkness. The other gods who died could have found similar materials to these coral, and they too could have also been corrupted. And perhaps this corruption resulted in all of them dying and the result of the bygone race, the Sealy. The darkness corruption could also be a result of the Tatodagami, or the curse Orobashi left behind after being slain. One more small thing I'd like to talk about before I wrap up this theory is the possibility that Alice and Varka could have gone to the Dark Sea. I know that in my Alice theory, I described the different angle, but the possibility of the Dark Sea is still totally possible. Alice referred to where she was going to as a dangerous place, and she left three years before the Genshin story started. Varka left six months before the story, so maybe Varka met up with Alice as a way of reinforcements. I'm not 100% sure on this, but I just wanted to bring up the possibility. Well, that wraps up my theory on the Dark Sea. There are still many mysteries we do not know about the Dark Sea, including if we are ever going to be able to go there. This place honestly has me more hype than anything right now, and I hope that one day we can go there. What are your thoughts on the Dark Sea though? It sure is filled with lore, huh? Let me know your thoughts down below on it. With that said, I'm gonna wrap this up. Thanks for opening the Teibachinary, and I will see you in the future for more Genshin Impact content and lore.